So what you're looking at is a complete removal of the seat. Basically um, two pins, two wires like that. Okay. Um, you've got accessories to remove like that. You've got um, gotta go easy don't break anything because in here it sits on a clip on the hook and it sits on a hook as well here as well um, see like this right here um, this right here and um, There was another hook I took a picture of, but nonetheless, you just have to go um, careful when you're removing the items. Um, really, and uh, this right here, see, you just take a, a flathead and kind of pull it out because it's just looped around and pinched in like this. Um, You've got this hook as well. Basically, the bottom cushion sits one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and this flat. Okay, and um, see that right there? Hooks on that. People get mad for me tapping, so I'm going to tap some more. Um, see this right here? And also to consider, see how the cloth pins are put in? In case anyone decides to take it out. Um, the, the design is, you're supposed to secure the cloth first and then the leather. Which means you can take the leather off without taking off the cloth. So when you're disassembling, don't worry about the cloth getting in the way because you can take the leather off over here without removing this see I already removed you don't have to do that so something to, to consider when you're looking at it you be thinking oh geez I have to take the black cloth off right well you don't um, you don't have to take it off and this is what the shit pot looks like over here goes the nut sack Oh, here goes the butt cheeks and uh, the shit piles up right here somewhere. To take this off, um, the best way to do it is um, push it that way. Because the hooks here and here are positioned this way. Um, so obviously take the screws off and you will notice. See that right there? See how the hook is positioned? So, um, push it that way. This metal frame is very identical. Um, so, the mounting fixtures are similar, identical. See, this is what I'm talking about. And um, you gotta push that way to get them out. This one pops out from here, this one pops out from here, you see, and then you have to, you got a clip here, you see, and here, and that's how you're going to take out the, the controller for the heating elements. So these are tricky to take off. First of all, you won't even recognize that these are pull out items and you have to um, wiggle them like this from the bottom I'm gonna see how I'm gonna wiggle these two out but I was able to get this in between and wiggle them out 
and uh, same goes here you're probably gonna use something like this to get underneath there to press it out at least a little bit so I can pull them from this end like this one for example I was able to look if you look close enough there's a way you can get in there and press it up and it comes up this one the same way from this end and I think this is going to be the more tricky one so you see the flat head I'm using and see these three holes so like this like this and since it the plastic it laps around right here it's very difficult I had to go in here as well like this slowly and uh, just persistence you know keep trying keep trying until you hit it and then uh, the top pins will come out so when you're initially looking at this you know you don't see how to properly remove this you know um, and the thing is there is a way you just have to um, take this off right here and then over here you know unhook this right from here you'll be able to see this wire see this wire that's a connecting wire see how this right here tucked in nicely and see how that pin is hooked up once you get loose basically like I was saying earlier there is no need of taking the black one off but there is a need to get this pulled out and in order to pull it out successfully have this have a good look at it to give you room to wiggle and uh, this is not the right tool to be honest but uh, if you're careful it's doable um, you know because right now when it's so all tight like this it's very difficult to um, get a good shake and wiggle to get it out I mean all it is is just tucked in over the edge the metal edge I'm going to be pulling it like this see how easy I'm about to pull it out but I'm not going to go all the way through I'm just going to pull it out because I, I don't have a good handle on this but I'm going to be taking this off pulling this off and basically this whole thing is going to peel off like this same approach if you look close it has that um, has this it keeps this piece from coming out um, so this area um, so if you have difficulties taking this off you could loosen you can push this one a little bit down other than that really um, see how just untucked everything unfolded everything and I was able to um, get good access um, to that leather uh, leather what do you call that hook so to put things back we are going to be talking about this so how are we going to put this back right we've got this that needs to be hooked on and we've got that needs to be tucked in so I think I'm going to be working from the back end and then pull it over wrap it around uh, that frame right there the metal pipe and then um, finish it off with with these uh, wire hooks um, but uh, that is going to go first removing the back piece um, flathead kind of eagle it and force it as close as possible see I put a press it over here and that was not correct you got to do it closer over here so downward and out so downward and out downward and out like downward and out so 
so you would be able to pull it out without breaking a piece like I did. <clears throat> and that's pretty much how the back end comes out. I won't be needing this, so that's why I'm doing it on the floor. Uh, and then just that's it, really. It hooks on like this and then pops it back in. And this is what it looks like. See Velcro, see that? Velcro right here. Velcro. Some, um, see how it all comes out. This assembly looks like a plastic cover over a metal frame. Same idea here. I don't have three hands, but this is the path and the kind of the angle, the location where you want to stick the flathead. And all I did was press like right here and, and pull it and pull the um, the snub upwards and it popped out. It only takes one. You don't need to do it from both from both sides. I don't think there is one on the other side, but I just did it from this side and it popped off. So this is how I'm taking it apart. I wanted to just replace the skin, but the skin is attached by hooks if you can get a good look inside there um, which are difficult to take out and for that reason I decided to, decided to just remove all of it the padding and the skin besides I mean if I'm gonna make a swap might as well just do it all the way yeah this is what it looks like this is the unfolding portion basically reverse is going to be putting it from the top down since i'm taking from the bottom up see this is the bottom and um that's what it looks like see how i took it out right here this is the top because see i have i have the seat upside down visualize this this is where the headrest goes on okay so as you look down upwards see how it's got its own seat for this to get in there so all I did was just kind of pry it open like this and it just easily came off ultimately I'll be peeling off everything that way uh, this right here um, I'm gonna take out the last and I'm gonna see how how it looks over there. If that's better condition, I'm just gonna replace this cloth as well. Just the frame of this um, seat, the top portion, is 12 pounds. Pretty sure. Uh, 10 pounds is slightly understatement. I think it's 12 pounds. Something else worth bringing up is the swip, switching the airbag to the other side. So, since the seat is passenger to driver, obviously the bag is on the flip side. Since the seat is designed to be carry the bag on this side, I'm going to be moving this airbag to this side. It has the frame, it has the holes, has everything it needs to make it happen so nothing too dramatic putting it back together pretty much put it back where it's supposed to be and over here I use a lot of pressure like a lot like 50 pounds of strength to have them locked in and when they pop in you'll hear when they pop in trust me Let's talk about the, these. There was a request from a few folks wanting to know how to take this off. It's a pain in the butt and um, we're gonna revisit this area. Um, 
So, see this? That means it's a male, it goes in first. That being said, that's why these hooks are this way, clipping. Um, their pressure is this way. Hence why you have to force it this way, right? And if you look at this, it's basically going to be sitting like this. So you cannot see them, right? Because if you look at this, where are they? Right? Also, how do you get a hold of them? Like, how do you, you know, slide the, a flathead, flathead into it? And, and how much pressure do you use? Because, I mean, if you apply too much pressure, you, you'll break them. And quite frankly, you have to use a lot of pressure. These are pretty hard for some reason. I pressed really hard to take them off. And even, look at this, I pressed really hard and still, see how the corner chipped off. Um, chipped off because I didn't press it all the way in. Because you technically are supposed to press it downward and then pull it out, press it outward. Pull it outward so it comes off the hooks so see where I pressed as well take a look at that see but if you sliding your flathead through here right your resistance comes in to where you're forced to put it right here right so make the effort to put it somewhere here and then you'll have more moment arm so to speak more flex <clears throat> push downward so it um, see I'm pressing pretty well, considerably hard and it's not even wedging so uh, to take these off it's not easy but it's doable to take these off are also doable with the seat still in the car you just have to visualize this properly right so here's the edge Here's the edge, approximately, what is that? One, two, three inches to get you to center. And then you're gonna have to wiggle your flathead to get a, center yourself by sound or by pressure, so that way you know you're in a position. And then you're gonna have to get a flathead long enough to get you in here. And long enough, because right here, if you look at this, you pretty much have your carpet and your floor on this side right because I have this upside down so from this point and here is somewhere your carpet is your distance is pretty much this much to get yourself comfortable and have enough uh, play to force your or push I guess you're supposed to put your hand in here right to force it downward so uh, clearance is the key word I guess I'm trying to find <laughs> Anyways, I'm kind of warping this on you by making this upside down, but you're gonna have to visualize this crap because here, see, look at this. How much room do you have? Not much, right? And you're gonna have to get yourself a flathead underneath there, unless, unless, if you create or bend a piece of metal at a hook so you can slide it in like this with a hook that's about approximately half an inch in width right half an inch in width and a hook approximately five inches long that loops around and has a handle so that way you can uh, force it down like this so you can force it up like this and press on it and pull it out press on it and pull it out that'd be the only way the foster people the seat people they probably have a fancy tool to where they can just go in like this grab a hold of it position themselves pull it and pop it out like this so it's something you're gonna have to do that you know you're gonna have to create that yourself unless you pop the whole seat out take the whole seat out flip it upside down put a flashlight guide your flathead downward 
approximate this location. Okay. You pre you apply force. I mean, I put at least 25 pounds of pressure on that, and then pop it outward.